morning, Church of the City. How you doing today? I'm like, <laughs> you got me, and I'm so mad. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm just like, I can't believe you did that. Like, like, no, like I, I, I had no idea. Like that, that really caught me, caught me off guard. Um, and how I didn't know about that, like, thanks. Yeah, that was great. All right. Oh, well, it is what it is. All right, so, yeah, I guess so. Um, I don't even know where to start. I do have to preach somehow, but, you know, I mean, whatever. <laughs> so, um, okay, y'all doing good today? Yeah? Y'all ready to learn more about the Holy Ghost today? That was horrible. That was weak. You ready to learn about the Holy Ghost today? I am, too. I'm excited. Um you know, I I don't know why, but I like I feel most excited about this message than any of the other ones um, in the series. And but it, you know, it is it is the way that it comes. And I don't know what the Lord wants to do, but we're going to allow Him to do it. Amen. 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 So um, just just so you're aware, kind of give you a heads up. Um, you know, of course, next next weekend is is Easter weekend. Um, we do do have our Easter fest on Saturday, um, so we still need lots and lots of volunteers. Uh, many of you that are sitting here right now, and I'm closing my eyes looking at you, so you don't think I'm calling you out. Uh, but a lot of you that are sitting here have not signed up to be here next weekend, and we really really need your help. So um, please make sure that uh, that you do volunteer if you can. Um, it's going to be a wonderful time, and we're we're going to have, I believe God's going to do big things even through Easter Fest, and so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I, I believe real big for it. So then we Easter on, on Sunday, we have Easter service, and um, I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, it's going to be a powerful Sunday, of course, uh, as always. So um, so anyways, kind of how things are looking, how things have unfolded today will be the last message of this series. Everybody say, oh. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. And um, and we'll jump into Easter next week. We'll have a special Easter message next week, and uh, and then the week after that, we'll be starting a brand new series that I am super 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 stoked about. And uh, I'm not going to give anything away right now, but it's going to be really good. I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, I believe God's going to do uh, some incredible things when we start the the next one. And um, I'm looking forward to kind of some of the things that we have lined up uh, for us. But we'll have Pastor Tyler uh, Wooten come in from, from uh, Shreveport to come uh, with us um, in a few weekends from now. I talked to him yesterday on the phone for a little bit, and uh, he's just really excited. His wife, Jaylee, will be coming uh, guest leading worship for us that Sunday. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be gonna be a great, great weekend. You, you're not going to want to miss that on May 1st. So uh, we're really looking forward to that. So, All right, you ready for the word today? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm only going to read just a few verses to you, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 13, that's it today, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9 through 13, it says this, very popular scripture, but as it is written, what I did not see an ear did not hear, and what never entered the human mind, God prepared. Everybody say prepared. This for those who love him. Verse 10. Now God has revealed. Everybody say revealed. He's revealed these things to us by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. We talked about that a few weeks ago. We spent some time about that. Verse 11. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man, what is in him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who comes from God, so that we may understand, everybody say understand, what has been freely given to us by God. Come on, aren't you grateful it's been freely given? Hallelujah. In verse 13, we also speak these things, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, explaining, everybody say explaining, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. Father, teach us something today. We receive your word. We thank you, Father, 
for your Holy Spirit, your precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. We receive your word now in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning that the Holy Spirit, well, if you're taking notes, first of all, let me kind of give you the title of the message. The title of the message is Be Connected to Who Knows. Be Connected to Who Knows. Okay? Be Connected to Who Knows. The Holy Spirit, you must know today, is not just in your life to sit within you, okay? He's, he doesn't just come and make and come and, and be in you and be with you in that way. The Holy Spirit does so much more. We just read in the scripture that the Holy Spirit comes to reveal things to you. So today I don't want to talk about tongues and 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 the 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 goosebumps and the this and the that we've spent all of our time on all of that the past couple of weeks i want you to understand that the holy spirit does far more than those things that the holy spirit comes to reveal the things of god to us so again, I've said this before, if you want to know the things of God, if you want to know the heart of the Father, then you have got to be connected and in tune with the Holy Spirit. You have to, because it's the Holy Spirit that reveals the very things of God. I want to know what God is doing in my life, right? Right? I want to know what's coming. I want to know where he's leading me. I want to know what he's got next for me. But the only way I'm going to really discover that is if I'm connected to the Spirit because it's the Spirit that reveals the things of God. Aren't you grateful this morning that the Holy Spirit doesn't just reveal things, but he also unveils them once he reveals them. And he unveils, watch this, what is already yours. He never unveils anything that doesn't belong to you. He unveils things that have already been revealed because they do belong to you. Come on, you ought to shout for that because that's good. The Holy Spirit will reveal it and he'll unveil it because it's for you. Amen? He's not going to reveal something that, that's just something that you have to go now chase after and all that. He says, okay, here it is. I'm unveiling it for you. It's yours. Come on, I'm grateful for the Holy Spirit this morning that he works that way. Amen? So we don't need the Holy Spirit to unveil the details for what is true for you. You already know the truth of the word. You know what is true for you. You know what, that the word of God is truth, right? We know that, right? The word of God is truth. We know that the Spirit of God speaks only truth, right? Because it comes directly from God, so it's only true, right? It has to be true. It can't be false. It can't be fake. It can't be made up. It's got to be true. So you must understand that the Holy Spirit is not just power, although that's my favorite part about the Holy Spirit, is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just power. The Holy Spirit is not just about tongues, I love that about the Holy Spirit. I love all of that. And he's not just about getting all revved up in a service and all excited and all spiritual. It's not just about that. But listen, he is also about intelligence. Intelligence. If he's going to reveal something to you, it's because he knows something about you, right? So he's not dumb. The Spirit of God is not dumb. The Spirit of God is not weak. Okay? The Spirit of God is intelligent. The Spirit of God is smart. The Spirit of God knows everything about you and knows everything that is to come about your life. Amen? He, always, he already knows those things. So the Holy Ghost enables you to receive power. But listen, if all you do is focus on the power and stop there, you're missing the fullness of who he really is. The power is great, but there's beyond the power, okay? And you can't miss the other aspects of the Holy Spirit. Remember, I taught you week one, the Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a he, okay? The, the Spirit of God himself, God three in one, triune being, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, okay? He is the Father, He is the Son, but He is also the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an it, and this is where a lot of people get messed up about Holy Ghost because they think it's a ghost, so they call it an it. It's not an it. It's a he. It's a part of the 
Godhead, okay? You got to understand that. So if you want God, you're going to have to want Jesus and you're going to have to want the Holy Spirit, okay? You got to want all three of them. So if he is a he, obviously we know we can't grieve the Holy Spirit. To grieve the Holy Spirit, he's got a personality. And if he has a personality, we know that if he has a personality, then it surely makes sense that he's intelligent, that he has intelligence. And I want to tell you today that the Holy Spirit isn't just your power source, but the Holy Spirit is your agent of information. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit is not just your power source, but the Holy Spirit is your agent of information. And I want you to understand that today because so many times when we talk about the Holy Spirit and we start talking about it and getting caught up in it, it's all about the power and how we can get the power and how we can get a feeling and this and that. But it's far beyond that. There's also intelligence that comes when you're in tune with the Holy Spirit. I love the power but I also love the knowledge. I can, I can be told all day long this is what's coming. But if I, don't, if I don't understand and I don't receive the steps that I need to take to get there, then I, I'm going to have a hard time getting there. So I need the knowledge of the Holy Spirit to help me to take step by step everything that he needs me to do to get to the place he wants me to be. God wants to do big things in our life. We know that. Great and mighty things. He wants to do incredible things. There are steps that it takes to get there, though. Sometimes God does a miracle and boom, just pops it right there in your lap. It's awesome. Sometimes it takes steps. Sometimes it takes some seeking. (laughs) It takes some knocking, you know, all that kind of thing. But it's the Holy Spirit that gives us the information. Amen? So I want to give you three last facts, if you will, about the Holy Spirit today. So three helpful facts about the Holy Spirit as we wrap this series up. And I believe that this is really going to help you out and really going to teach you a lot. They're really basic, but I believe that they're really powerful too. Three helpful facts about the Holy Spirit. Number one is this, that the Holy Spirit knows everything. He knows everything. We read in the scripture that it's the the Spirit that even knows the thoughts. (laughs) Like, that right there should, like, not necessarily scare you, but definitely put the fear of the Lord in you. Like, the Lord knows your very thoughts. And sometimes we th- think some things that are not good to think. And can you imagine that the Lord knows all of those thoughts? Like, so when we ask for forgiveness, we can't just say, God, forgive me for what I did. But we got to say, God, forgive me of what I thought. <laughs> Right? Because, like, sometimes our thoughts is what actually leads us into the action of sin. Okay? And if we would have put a stop to our thought pattern, we would have never sinned to begin with. And so we have got to ask for forgiveness. And that's why it says, creating me a clean and pure heart. Right? And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Right? There is a renewing of the mind that has to take place. Okay? And, and, and that's all important. I don't have time to get into a whole other message on that today. But you need to know it's the Holy Spirit <laughs> knows the thoughts. Like, and that's incredible, but it helps me also at the same time because if my thoughts are not in tune with God's thoughts, then I need the Holy Spirit to get a hold of my thoughts. Because my thoughts are going to lead me to destruction, right? But we know that the Spirit is the one that gives life and life more. But So if, if I want to get on God's thought, if I want to get in His thought pattern, if I want to be connected to His heart, then I need to be connected to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows the very thoughts of man, but the Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God. We just read it. So God, I want to know what you're thinking. Forget what I'm thinking. I don't want to think. (laughs) You know, help me to think only what you think. Amen? So the Holy Spirit knows everything. It's funny how we don't follow the Holy Spirit's advice and instructions, though. We're like, man, I love the Holy Ghost. I love the power of the Holy Spirit. I can speak in tongues, and I can do this and this and that. But then the Holy Spirit gives us instruction, and we say, glory to God, but no. (laughs) You know? And, and we, 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 we pretend to put a stop to the Holy Spirit's work because we like the power, but we don't like the instruction. We like the power, but we don't like the knowledge, right? We like the power, but we don't like the direction. And if you're going to be connected to the Holy Spirit, again, it's far beyond the power. You have got to 
think the way that God thinks. You gotta think the way the Holy Spirit thinks. You gotta be so in tune with him and be okay and be obedient to the instruction and the advice that he gives you. Amen? Listen, church, don't you dare ever think that you are smarter than the Holy Spirit. I mean, seriously. And I don't say that because I'm just throwing it in there. I say that because I really feel that at times we think that we are smarter than the very Spirit of God. No, I know that's what you're telling me, Holy Spirit, but I really believe this is the direction right here or whatever it may be. And so many times, even unknowingly, we disobey disobey the voice of the Holy Spirit and his instruction because our flesh tries to override the Spirit. We know that. It's in constant battle every day. As soon as you wake up and put your feet on the ground, man, you get off that bed, man, you, you, you got to know it. it's, it's a battle right then and there. Boom. Right? And it's a battle for the flesh, man. So it's, is, is the flesh going to submit to the spirit or is your flesh going to override the things of the spirit? I mean, it's an automatic thing that every day, as soon as you wake up, you got to make that decision. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit searches and knows all things. Not just some, not just parts, but he knows all things. And did you know that the the Holy Spirit knows the end from the beginning? How, How is that? Because God was in the end before he was ever in the beginning. And if there are three in one, and if the Spirit of God was active and alive in there, then the Spirit already knows your end from your beginning. So if he already knows the outcome, I need to trust the Spirit. Because the Spirit, God does all things for good, right? He works all things out for good. There is good that is ahead of me. But there's a lot of bad things that I'm gonna I, I I do or I say or I position myself or whatever, and I'm and it's like constantly putting up roadblocks to the good thing that's to come, right? And, and it's the Holy Spirit that knows our end from our beginning. And so if you want to walk out your true purpose, if you want to walk out your true calling, your true destiny, all of those kind of things, then you have got to be connected with the Spirit because the Spirit already knows what is to come. Come on, somebody say amen. So the Holy Spirit has already been everywhere that you haven't even thought of going yet. Isn't that incredible to think about? Okay. <laughs> the Holy Spirit has already been everywhere that you haven't even thought about going yet. Gives a whole nother definition of he goes before you, <laughs> right? Like those that are trying to get a house right now in this place, think about this. He's already been in the house that is about to be yours. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? He's already been there. Some of you that are trying to get a different job, promotion, whatever, like he's already been there before you ever step foot. Wow. Because he knows your end from your beginning. He knows what's to come. That's why it says your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Like there is a clear path because there has already been made a path for you. We are the ones that get off course, not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has already made clear way, clear way. So you're making decisions based on the past and even sometimes based on the present. But the Holy Spirit makes decisions knowing the past, knowing the present, but also knowing the future. You don't know what your future holds, which the Holy Spirit does. He already knows how things are going to work out. So you have, you have a choice to either accept his wisdom or accept your own wisdom. But here's the deal. Your life is a direct reflection of whose voice you listen to. The voice that you listen to the most is what you are going to reflect the most. If you don't listen, if you don't make the Holy Spirit's voice a priority, then eventually you're going to see it. Because that means that you are listening to another voice that is louder than the Holy Spirit. Somehow you have got connected to another voice instead of being connected to the Holy Spirit. 
And whosoever voice you're listening to most is what's going to come forth. It's what's going to be reflected off of you and out of you and from within you, right? It's just like if I went anywhere to any location, let's just, I don't know, say a sports bar. I don't know. And there's a game going on. And I'm sitting there and I'm cheering on my team and I get upset if they make a mistake or whatever. But the guy next to me is using every foul word in the book, cussing out the team and da-da-da-da. And then all of a sudden this person next to me is cussing and cussing and cussing. And then everybody around me is cussing. I'm liable at some point before I walk out of that place to cuss. Right? Because it's all that I've heard. It's all that's around me. I've positioned myself in an atmosphere of foul language. I'm bound to say something that I shouldn't say because of everything that's around me and who's around me and the voices that I'm listening to. So if you want to speak what God is speaking, if you want to declare what God is declaring, then you have got to make the voice of the Holy Spirit louder than anything else that you listen to. Yeah, you ought to clap real loud for that right there. Because it's true. you got to be so connected to him and you've got to listen to his voice. He already knows. And that's why you got to be so careful who you spend hours on the phone with. Hello, somebody. That's why you got to be so careful who you spend the most time with. That's why you got to be careful of who you hang out with and who you allow into your home and who you go into their home, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Because anytime someone, anytime someone has your ear, they influence you. Period. Anytime someone has your ear, they're, they're influencing you. And it's either going to be good or it's going to be bad. Positive, negative, whatever. So I want to listen to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows everything. Okay? So three helpful facts about the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Holy Spirit knows everything. Number two is this. You're going to love this. The Holy Spirit knows your purpose. The Holy Spirit knows, if you're, you know, if you're writing it down, you can write my purpose. The Holy Spirit knows my purpose. I'm going to read verses um, 11 and 12 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 11 through 12. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man that is in him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. In verse 12, now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who comes from God, so that we may understand what has been freely given to us by God. So, if the Holy Spirit knows something for you, it can only be accessed through him. So then the question is, if he knows something about me or if he knows something for me and it can only be accessed through him, then what does he know? What would he even know then? If he knows all of these things and in order for me to obtain it, to obtain that knowledge, I have to have the Holy Spirit. I have to access it through the Holy Spirit. If that's the case, then what would he know? Well, he knows your purpose. He knows your purpose. Because he's not going to know and only speak all the bad things about you. He knows the good things. He knows the purpose. He knows the hidden purposes of God for your life. So that's why he's trying to help you in that situation because he already knows the outcome. Because it's attached to your purpose. He already knows that job situation and how it's going to unfold and where you need to be next. Why? Because it's directly connected to your purpose. He already knows who you're supposed to be around and who you're supposed to invest your time and listen to and all that kind of stuff. Why? Because it's all directly related to your purpose. That's why you got to be careful of the atmosphere. You got to be careful of people. You got to be careful of what you allow. All of those kind of things because they, it's spirit against spirit. 
man, boom. Spirit against spirit. And the spirit knows the good things, the purposes of God for your life. And we know that the enemy will raise up a situation, raise up a voice, raise up a family member, friend, whatever it may be to put a stop to the purpose of God on your life. It's the way it works. It's the way this whole thing works. It's as simple as that. Although honestly, the Holy Spirit doesn't care what color shirt you want to buy today. God, what co- God, I'm looking at these three shirts for Easter service. Show me, O oh Lord God Jehovah, which one I'm to buy. Now, if you do that, whatever. That's awesome. Okay. Go into the go into QT. Lord Jesus, should I get the Reese's peanut butter cups? Or should I get the Hershey's cookies and cream? Some of y'all are starting to get hungry now. You know, whatever, right? And it's like I really don't I if you have a scripture that like proves it otherwise, that's fine. And maybe he cares, maybe he does it, but I really don't think he cares about what color shirt you want to buy today or what kind of candy bar sticks out most to you. Like, God, reveal it to me right now. Just let it shine like glory right now in this store. Like, I just need to know. Like, I, I don't think he really is interested and in, in invested into those kind of things, right? I, I really don't. But he surely is interested in what the will of God is for your life. Like, if you're going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for direction about anything, anything, you should certainly be asking him what the will of God is for your life. God, what is the will and purpose for this thing right now? God, what are you trying to teach me through this situation right now? God, what is it that you're trying to show me? God, what's next for my life? And all that's, those are the kind of things that you should be seeking the Holy Spirit about. We get so caught up in needing answers from the Holy Spirit about everything. Have you ever met anybody like that? They talk to God about anything and everything, which is okay. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I believe that the Lord loves us, (laughs) okay? And I believe he's so gracious. Like he just, he's he's like, that was really cute what you prayed for, but I'm already taking care of it. Like, don't worry. Like, I believe God is so funny in that way too, but I believe we don't have to get caught up in all of the mumble jumble of life and have to try to figure out all of these things like, God, are you telling me to buy the the Ford or the or the GMC? Like I just don't know, God. Like you just need to show me. Like, okay, like he's like maybe he'll maybe he'll show you, you know, whatever. But I believe that he's really invested in the will of God for your life. I'm not so sure that the candy bar or the t-shirt or the truck is connected to your purpose. I'm really not entirely sure of that. But, but I do know that the, that the will of God and the situations and circumstances and outcomes and all that are connected to your purpose. Okay? I really do believe that. And all the while, I believe God is just wanting to reveal things to us through his spirit. And he's revealing and unveiling things to us so that he can show us what's to come. What's to come? So, number one, the Holy Spirit knows everything. Number two, the Holy Spirit knows your purpose. And number three is this. I love this. The Holy Spirit increases your senses. The Holy Spirit increases your senses. How many of you know that God normally speaks what is abnormal to you? (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like, hold on, wait a second. Like, God, that doesn't really line up. That doesn't really make sense. Like, that's not really normal, God. Are you sure about that? Right? Are are you sure, Holy Spirit, that that's what you're leading me to do? Like, that that just doesn't line up. Like, that's a little odd, right? No, no, definitely. That's exactly what I want you to do. That's exactly what I'm saying, right? And it's like, okay, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem like it's normal at all, but I will go for it. Whatever you say, God, right? And then we are obedient in it, and then God shows up, and, you know, it's marvelous, and all this stuff is like, it's incredible, right? And thank God that we were obedient to it, right? But, but you know you've been talking to God when it doesn't make any sense to you. <laughs> I mean, really, think about that. A lot of times you talk to God, and it don't make no sense. 
Like, God, that, that doesn't line up with what I'm thinking right now. And he says, it doesn't have to line up with what you're thinking because I've already thought it and I know you're in from your beginning. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense to you. It makes perfect sense to me because I am God, the Father, and I already know everything. And I already know how this is going to work out for your good. So don't worry about your thoughts and what you think in the direction that you think this is going to go in. I know it doesn't line up and it seems abnormal to you, but actually it is perfect for me because I am the perfect Father and I have a perfect will of God for your life. You just got to get connected to me and you got to trust me. You got to know that the things I do are going to be a little bit different than what you would think. The natural man can't receive the things of God because the natural man depends on senses for information. I feel this. I feel that or I heard this or I, I saw that, you know. Someone told me, you know, and, and, and the natural man will depend on our senses or our natural senses for information. When God begins to speak to you in another dimension, it defies your senses and it makes sense to you. It defies your natural senses because it makes perfect sense in the spiritual realm. Think about it. Walls of Jericho. Go march around these walls all these times. And when you do that, and when you blow the trumpet, then all of a sudden they're going to fall down. Are you kidding me? Like, that makes no makes no sense. They do it and it happens. Okay, God, your ways are not my ways. So, okay. Walk on the water. Hold on, Jesus, that makes no... I'll walk on the water anyway. Right? Like, think about it. Like, okay, disciples, listen. See this few little fishies and this few little loaves of bread? There's 5,000 people here. I want you to walk around with this basket and feed every single one of them. Whoa, hold on. Wait a second, Jesus. This makes no sense. It's never going to make sense to us. It's never going to make sense, and it's never going to line up with our natural way of thinking. It never will. It never will make sense. But listen, faith doesn't make sense. Like, like it's, not, it's not created to make, make all the sense in the world because faith comes by believing, right? Like, we have, to, we have to believe it. We have to believe in this faith, right? Like, it doesn't make sense in the natural. It makes zero sense, but we got to have faith to believe for it. That, that's why your family or your coworkers look at you nuts when you, when you tell them what God is doing. <laughs> I mean, come on, for real here. Like, it, it doesn't make sense to them at all. Some of you are like, I know exactly what that's like. <laughs> See, faith doesn't need the sensual. It just needs the spiritual. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God, right? It doesn't come by our senses. It comes in the spirit. So the spiritual ability to know something is wrong like that's not this natural sense like that that comes by the spirit like when the spirit of god tells you that something's wrong with your children you need to start praying for them and fasting for them and then they come to you weeks later and say oh my god mom what dad what, i've been going through da, da, da. and you say you know what i already know because the spirit of god told me two weeks ago to start praying for you i didn't know what it was about but i just started praying Right? That feeling that you get not to go somewhere because it doesn't sit right with you. <laughs> Someone says, meet me at such and such location. And you're just like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. I'm not so sure about that one there. <laughs> if it's not QT and there's not Reese's Pieces or whatever, I'm not there. Sorry. It's not Reese's peanut butter cup and a what, Jen? How well do you know me? Reese's peanut butter cup and a what? I ain't your daughter. All right, well, you're a big wrong. Not a big red, a red bull. All right, you're close. Got one word, right? It's the Holy Spirit that 
is the one that teaches us those things. That the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals the things in the Spirit to us. That in the natural way of thinking and all that, like, it wouldn't line up and it wouldn't make sense. And then the Spirit of God speaks something to us. And in that moment, we have a choice to either trust the Spirit's voice or not. If we can choose not to trust the Spirit's voice. But what if you did? I mean, what if you did? Like, think about how the outcome would have been maybe entirely different or, or whatever. So listen, don't tell me you're not spiritually strong. You're just working out your spiritual senses. I believe you're strong in spirit. I believe that. It's our spiritual senses that we've got to ask the Holy Ghost to increase. Increase my awareness of your voice. That's a big one right there. In increase my ability to not listen to the things of the world and listen to you, Holy Ghost. Increase my awareness and my senses of what you're trying to do, Holy Spirit, through the Spirit, from God. Help me. Listen, if we can just live that way, man, I'm telling you, like, God, you won't even, you'll, like, you'll be like, well, I thought I'd be amazed by that, but like, wow. Like, look at what God just did. Like, I wish I would have lived this way years ago. Right? And listen, you have it. You have it. You all have it. You just got to learn how to use it. You got the Holy Ghost in you. Made an altar call last week. We saw a few people get filled. Or we saw some evidence of tongues come forth and all that kind of stuff. I even know people that I found out later that didn't come down to the altar, but they stayed in their seats and they still got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. So we all got it. And we all got the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through us, and it's an amazing thing. But now we just need to say, Holy Spirit, I understand your power, but now I just need to gain the knowledge. Increase my senses. Increase my awareness of, of you, Holy Spirit. Allow me to know when it, when it really is you speaking. I think if we can make that our prayer today. That God will begin to do things that will beyond blow our minds. Because when you can listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit... And the voice of the Holy Spirit alone. Can you imagine? <laughs> so like I, I just, God forgive me for not listening to your voice all the time, right? I mean, really. Like, I repent for that. I apologize, God, because I need to be so connected to your voice. Because it's only, it's only through your Holy Spirit that I'm going to really be able to walk out the purpose for my life. I want that to be our prayer today. Can we end the series on this note? Just saying, God, I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Spirit. Grateful for all the things that you've taught us the last few weeks. Now, I just want to be so in tune to your voice. And I want the intelligence side now. I need the, I need the smarts now, okay? I need my thoughts to line up with what the Holy Spirit's thoughts are. And that needs to be our prayer today. So stand to your feet with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you so much for joining us. 
We hope the Lord spoke to you through today's message. If you have any prayer need or praise reports, please send us an email at cotcdfw at gmail.com. Please like and share this message so we can reach as many people as possible. We hope you have a great week. We'll see you soon.